listening. Um, right, where were we? <laughs> oh, apologies for the delay on this one. I um, couldn't stay awake very well, uh, so I basically went to bed at the same time as the children yesterday. Um, I don't like my meds. Some days I can stay up okay, and some days I find it really, really hard, and it's a struggle. So I just go to bed as early as possible. Um, but they're still settling down. <laughs> and they have to start again. Right, where were we? So the last one was a short one, and it was... I had a bee in my bonnet, didn't I? Um, what was it about? Oh yes, I watched it earlier to make sure I'd get this right as well. Right. Oh yes, my concerns over the future of the global education system and the people influencing the direction thereof. And individual responsibility, that was the other one, wasn't it? Yes, of course. Um, yeah, we don't have to like the choices that we're given in life, but when we're given choices in life, we do have to choose. Um, grotesque, horrible example, um, some of the stuff that's been going on around the world recently that we hear about where, you know, people are having guns put, their, put to their head um, and told to do awful, awful things that they would never in a million years do um, or die. <laughs> And then in that moment, those people had to make that choice. Um, who knows? You know, it's not until you're in a situation where it is literally do or die that you know what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember the lyrics of a, a, of a song. It's by Slipknot. And I'm just trying to remember the title of the song. But there's some very relevant lyrics. Never mind. Anyway, so personal responsibility. Um, and also, yeah, personal responsibility for our actions and feelings and things. You know, if, if you don't like something, then do something about it. Um, it's that simple. You don't have to <laughs> change the world. You don't have to go and make big protests and cover your face in blood and all that rubbish. Um, and shout people down as a re you have your freedom of speech to stand there and do those things well the person speaking has the freedom of speech to be there speaking so shut up basically um <laughs> not interested not interested um and when people get into these subjects and you know, it's very easy. We're all young and naive to start with, of course, and we go, you know, some of us will go gung-ho into the world. We don't like what we see and we think, oh, it needs to be changed. And you think, yeah, I'm the one, I can change the world. Or, you know, some people do. Um, and organise these ridiculous protests and these things that actually make the situation worse. I mean, just look at, is it Brown University? In, uh, in America where those r ridiculous protests have been held regarding, I think it was Milo Yiannopoulos, um, apologies Milo if I've just butchered your name, um, not very good at that one I'm afraid, sorry mate, um, yeah, uh, and Christina Hoff Summers, you know, they, these people have got valid points and even if they didn't have valid points they're allowed to speak so let them speak and if you don't like it as Milo quite rightly says, have a discourse, have a conversation. You prove that you shouldn't be there by acting like children, you know? It, it frightens me that my children are growing up and are going to be working under the likes of these people. They're going to be their bosses. They're going to be their... their <laughs> leaders. And that... that that's fucking scary, man. Um, so if you do want to go into these things, that's absolutely fine. But do your bloody research and don't expect anyone else to do it for you. Um, you know, I could sit here and tell you the sky is fucking green. And maybe you'll believe me, maybe you won't. But 
the only way to know <laughs> is to look for yourself, is it not? Um, if in doubt, check it out. It's a very simple mantra. It's one that I give to my children. And if they can understand it, then I'm pretty sure university level students should be able to understand that too. Um, really not rocket science. Right. Now, that's all I want to say on that because it's just silly. It, it sh shouldn't even be a thing. Anyway, uh, the artwork. Oh, I meant to check the date before I started, before I hit record. Um, now, I set it up. I think I'm going to overrun. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I have some things that I need to do over the next few days. So, although I should, I should be feeling a lot more that way inclined. Um, and there's a chance that over the next few days, while I'm in between these things, uh, I will uh, feel that way inclined and it will be ha it will happen but there is a good chance i'm going to miss it so as i said <laughs> if i do and somebody fancies knocking up an animation or something like that or or a skit or whatever please do because that'd be really funny and just post it to the page and uh, you'll probably have me laughing my socks off um because yeah you know, I've asked for a kick up the arse if I need one and I deserve one, then please make it funny. Uh, let's see. So the artwork. I will double check the amount of days left. I did have the date down as the 26th yesterday. So it's either the 26th or the 27th, I believe. So I've got 10 days by that count. Or nine days. No. Seven days. Seven days or six days. So yeah, I'm probably going to miss it. Right, sorry about that. Uh, musings about that. Um, oh, the medium, the medium that I'm going to use. Um, the picture that I published is acrylic paints and some old flat pack draw baseboards <laughs> um i love recycling uh i love well, upcycling um but i don't i see a lot of upcycling projects and i think yeah but that's more of a waste than anything else and you could have used those materials or or, or those found items <laughs> in a much more efficient way, <laughs> you know. Um, and I hate to be horrible, but you know, so if I'm gonna do something, it has to be, you know, worth it in my opinion, and that's really snobbish, I know, but there we go. Um, yeah, so the medium I've got is, is boards um, and acrylic paint, um, and I've never actually done anything well, I've never done a painting with acrylic paint. I've used acrylic paints for several things, but not for producing a painting of any description, as it were. Um, you know, a creative piece. Um, and I do have lots of ideas, but I can't quite, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's perhaps I'm anxious about it because it's something so new. Perhaps it's because I've got so much else going on. Um, but yeah, I do have some really cool, well, I think they're really cool ideas. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting it done. So yeah, I'm rambling about that now, just rambling today. And the bad news is I've, uh, <laughs> I've backed up my phone. So I've got like seven gig worth of space to kill. And who knows, I could well do that. We're nearly there, look. Ow. <laughs> Loads of fun. Uh, but yeah. Um, oh, yes. And the... Uh, I, oh, I did think. I might 
sell it when it's done um, if someone wants to buy it and the written piece or spoken piece whichever well it'll be both won't it um, <laughs> potentially um, to go with it so that I can donate some money to the fund because I'd love to do that um, but I'm really not in a position to be able to <laughs> spend anything that's not essential at the moment um, I can't wait to get out of here and get settled and get working again I, I hate not working um, and the best bit is being in the house is the biggest part of look I'm trying to style my hair silly girl um, being in the house is my biggest problem um, and I haven't worked since June well yeah June last year um, it kind of breaks my heart uh, I have got there is a, a, a company that I would like to work for there's also obviously a lot of things that I want to achieve myself um, so yeah but I was thinking sell the artwork stop justifying my existence um, sell the artwork if someone wanted to buy it I'd just I don't know maybe have an auction um, and then um, donate the prof the, the proceeds profit <laughs> proceeds to the um, to the monetary appeal that'd be quite cool to be able to do that um, right the next thing on the actual list because I'm very very distracted I've had a lot of caffeine today because I'm tired of being tired so I thought well I know I'm probably gonna end up with a migraine but I'd rather be awake and get some stuff done um, you know awake enough not awake as in physically awake as in brain awake um, oh yeah Batman's on camera mm -hmm. I'm gonna try and grab a picture of him or, or that <laughs> to post up for you to go alongside this because I think that'd be kind of cool I mean it, it, it's Batman Batman is on the camera how lucky am I um, yes the dangers of the condition uh, conditioning trends the dangers of continuing trends or uh, continuing of prevailing trends I don't think it takes too much intellect to work out that the way things are going is pretty disastrous on all fronts um, the only thing that seems to be really positive is the amount of people that are coming out in not coming out but you know stepping up in, in, in one form or another and speaking their truth um, and sharing their knowledge with the world and similarly to myself my, myself <laughs> that's my welling brush showing um yeah similarly to myself would like to hmm, i don't know if hmm, i suppose inspire is the right word but encourage other people to realize that even if it's something tiny we have the option to use our time here on earth or whatever um, to do good or simply live in existence and having had both a strong independent well-funded life <laughs> that was fun um, and several times over having been <laughs> the absolute lowest of the lowest in or uh, amongst the lowest of the low in in in, in social <laughs> social terms um, I'd much rather be able to get by and live a good life and 
raise my children to be well-rounded human beings um, with a true sense of self without having to go I mean obviously <laughs> we all go through a myriad of, of nasty experiences um, and the idea here is to show people or to remind people that those experiences serve to to, to, to strengthen us to broaden our horizons um, I often say blinkers um, that people walk around with their blinkers on or that people are ostriches <laughs> um, or they, there's an ostrich mentality and there's a meerkat mentality and I've I've tried to live in both camp well no I've tried to live in the ostrich camp and I can never do that and um, as it goes I have some health problems that physical health problems that are exacerbated by stress um, they're fun and time and time again I've come back to the same conclusion which is quite simply that I think I put yeah I did post this earlier that, 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 that for me the key to my tranquility is to do what I'm doing to speak my truth to encourage others to do the same but to do so in a peaceful amiable way yeah I swear yeah I can argue with the best of them um, I choose not to I don't see the need of it um, I've seen too many people suffer and there are too many people suffering everywhere for it to be necessary to argue between people let's have a discussion and if you're not prepared to have a discussion remove yourself or be removed end of um, and I apply that rule to my to, to, to my children as well um, that you know we're all entitled to our feelings we're all entitled to our thoughts our opinions of course part of who we are of course we're um, however how we share them how we share our thoughts feelings and so on um, has an impact on the world around us whether we like it or not whether we want it to or not it has an impact on the world around us so there is that very key simple thing of how would you feel what if it was you and that why that has gone from well from younger generations I don't know because it's the simplest way to understand empathy isn't it how would you feel you walk up to someone and punch them in the face okay that person could punch you back in the face how would you feel if you wouldn't like it don't do it it's quite simple if you wouldn't want it done to you don't do it to someone else it's end of sorry I know, I know a lot of people don't get that and it is yeah okay it sounds a little bit well it sounds a lot religious and all the rest of it and I get that but the thing is it's common sense I don't want to have a fight I don't need the stress You don't need the stress. Nobody needs the stress. Scientists are proving now time and time again that uh, the effects of stress are almost, well, equal, if not potentially greater than long-term effects, than a lot of bad health, uh, health style, lifestyle choices. Um, again, please feel free to challenge that and I will then produce evidence if I'm requested to, but I'm not being funny. I do talk off the top of what I know. So, and I hate to say it because I'm not bragging, 
um, but my general knowledge is very good. It's I, I love to learn. I it, I'm not at ease in the world, or haven't been at ease in the world in the past. I'm not at ease in my home at the moment. Um, I haven't been at ease in the world in the past, but I am at ease in the world now and I'm because I'm at ease with myself I know who I am I know how I tick I know what my limit is I know what my reactions mean um, and they are quote unquote unconventional um, yeah I'm eccentric and that's a byproduct of having to face things or having having had to face things time and again that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. So, uh, and seeing my children, um, helping my children with the aftermath of things that they wouldn't wish on their worst enemy. Um, So no, there's there's no time, there's no point, and it's it, it, we all have a responsibility now. The only way to really contextualise what I'm trying to say is to is to um, confess something from <laughs> you. Look, we've got two now. Do do. Um, dancey dance. Um. I'm not going to go into any particular detail. I am only going to say that I have, in my past, when I was a youth, I don't like that word, youth. Sounds like, yeah, you just don't sound good, doesn't it? Youth. Um, especially when I'm old enough to say the youth of today. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> I had to make that decision. I was, I found myself in situation, one specific situation, where I had no choice but to choose if somebody to intervene in a situation in which potentially someone could die. Um, and I did. Um, and then I spent the next few years waiting for the repercussions. Um, and they never came. <laughs> they never came. Um, not, not in a direct way. And then, so I know without a shadow of a doubt, that if I'm put into a situation where someone's trying to cause serious harm to another person, or even an animal, um, I can't walk away from that. And I know what I'm physically capable of, and I keep that to myself because that's not a side of myself that I like at all. And so when I was very much younger, I had to balance this and uh, obviously hormones, all of that stuff going on, I would go into fits of rage and nobody in that environment, because it was generally school or friends. Um, oh my sister <laughs> hey. um, older sister I will say <laughs> yeah I would I'd go off into rages and nobody really understood why and, and that was because obviously it was all kept very close to my chest and um, one day I reacted to something so quickly with violence that and it I could have hurt someone and 
that shocked me. That shocked me, and I uh, I then went <whistles> and completely. I've forgotten what the word is. Internalized. I, I, I complete. You know, I've forgotten what the word is, but I shut myself off. I shut down basically, and and little bit by little bit, everything that I loved just ended up going out of the window. Um, and then it took me, as I said in the original talk, the TED talk, it took me up until I was about 28 to uh, start really putting those pieces back together. And, and although I was okay with me anyway, um, I, I accept that I'm odd and I have done for a long time and uh, that's quite fine. Um, you know, I have danced around in the middle of the local shopping centre, singing to baby, um, for the simple fact that somebody needed cheering up, and I like happy children, um, and that was that was a frequent thing, and that was before that was a couple, no, two years before, um, roughly. Um, and um, yeah, so I was okay with me, but I still didn't understand. And then when I hit 28, I had unfortunately a lot of flashbacks and stuff because um, I was watching things in the environment around me and it, it triggered off a whole bunch of flashbacks and stuff. So. That was scary as hell. Um, but there was no reason to suppose that I would ever be in a situation that I would feel that vulnerable ever again. I understood it. I'd worked through it. I talked to my doctor about it. He was quite happy that I wasn't a, you know, a danger to anyone. And this is back then. And as I've said before, I've been repeatedly found to be not a danger to anyone recently. Um, I wonder if I'll ever tell that story. Uh, <laughs> I'm brushing the same side over and over again. It's no good. Oh, look, it's all done. <gasps> oh, hang on. Yeah. Woohoo! And it's got my hair back. <sighs> She's great because I need to be a little bit more presentable. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, waffle, waffle, waffle. Waffle jabble waffle jabba jabba waffle 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 Oh dear Right So Individual responsibility I think I've probably said that uh, and it as I say this is a cyclical thing so let's just go on the dangers of prevailing trends are that basically the whole world's going to go to hell in a handbasket we're halfway there already so let's all pull our socks up and think about it a bit more um, and that one thing that always boggles me is that people don't see uh, that, that there seems to be a general misconception that morality religion and ideology are somehow interlinked well they and they are however they exist independently of each other i'm not religious but i'm i i, I have a very strong personal moral code which i will read at some point apparently i have a nice voice thank you um and I don't follow any preordained system. Um, I formed my own way of being and I'd highly recommend that people sit down and think about that uh, in terms of their own. Uh, it was, again, it was part of my coursework years ago and uh, we were asked to discuss our personal morals and beliefs, our personal belief system. Now, most people in the course prescribe to a religion or not. You know, there was a definition available. <laughs> and of course me, uh, you know, I'm not an atheist, 
but I'm not a Christian and I'm not anything else. Shit. Um, so I had to sit down and define it all and I did. And it's been refined a couple of times over the years since, but only added to, it's not been taken away from. And uh, that's just from having a broad understanding of a lot of different things. Someone once said to me, um, it's better, to, I'm gonna say this wrong, I'm sure I am. It's better to know a little about a lot of things than a lot about a little thing, sort of thing. Uh, I have probably said that wrong, but yeah, it's general knowledge, a broad general knowledge will get you much further in life, not necessarily in work because of all the pieces of paper that mean nothing, but we all have to have to get anywhere now. Um, that will get you much further in life, generally. And it's important that more noise is made about that because we really are in a mess. We're really in a confused state. And it's, um, it's no good, Batman. Anyway, that's that one. Caveats. This is another one. The importance of the caveats. One in four people will suffer with a mental health condition. Dot, dot, dot. Per year. And that's from the BACP Twitter feed which is the British Association for Counselling and Psychotherapy. And that's quite recent, as in within the last week. Um, and previously it was at any one time, during the time of my studies, and I believe the book, um, the most current statistics at that time dated from around 2009. And at that point it was one in four people will suffer with a mental health condition at any one time. And that caveat per year at any one time changes lining four people up and go one, two, three, right, you've got a mental health condition, you're done for life, see you later mate. To actually, it could be you now, then you can recover and then it could be me, fuck. And then it's worth taking a little bit more seriously. Um, because, well, I know that in the majority of cases, common mental health conditions will occur once maybe, or can appear just once in somebody's life. Someone can have a period of be a, a, a schizophrenic episode without being permanently schizophrenic. It's not that cut and dried. Otherwise, as I say, you'd line one in four people, four people up and one, two, three, four, right off you go, because you're, you're just done. You're, <laughs> your brain's gone wrong, see ya. Well, it doesn't work like that. It really doesn't work like that. Which brings me to uh, the research project. Now, the research project, oh, I have it here. Ta-da, there's me notes. Uh, well, no, well, that's the uh, title hypothesis and so on and so forth. Now, being a reflective kind of a character. I've come, I've, I've, it's, there are physiological impacts of trauma at varying levels. Um, so the current research into the project, the, the research project, um, is to find more about that um, and define that a little bit better. <laughs> Uh, statistical research and analysis of current available data, which I believe I'm going to the ONS for, um, but as I say, with the way things have been the last few days, I uh, haven't been able to do 
much more in the way of progress here. Uh, but I will be looking for frequencies, the environments, support for survivors that is already available, um, support, support that survivors feel they may need, um, historical and current rates of reporting and due process because I have some anecdotal knowledge um, from a very, 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 very trustworthy source um, that's been playing on my mind for a number of years now um, however I cannot name that source um, so I'm going so the idea is to find some find further evidence myself within statistics and stuff that are out there and through making inquiries and such doing the job um, so yeah, if anyone's got any stories they'd like to share, you can. It will be completely anonymous. I'm not going to do that to anyone. Um, because as I've said, like with the artwork and doing this in the first place, I know how hard it can be to stand up and go, do you know what, don't like it, want to do something about it. So, let us be your lighthouse. Let me just say that. Pearls of Wisdom. We all, I'm, I'm assuming we all know what pearls of wisdom are. Um, little nuggets of, like little sayings, like uh, I've got some here. Um, the value of their interpretation, though, cannot be overstated. Uh, and how they are interpreted and the, 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 the wisdom to interpret these things at their deepest levels rather than the surface levels because and I, I have seen this time and time again um, and the glaring one is the end one but some that I've heard and I even use a lot uh, more haste less speed although I know that that one goes the other way as well the more speed less haste um, a stitch in time saves nine and the one that I know can do a lot of damage because I've had cause to sit and look at it and think about it and witness things um, when you don't know what to do the best thing to do is nothing now on the surface yeah great they all yeah bang them out but that last one especially when you don't know what to do do nothing should never be taken literally <laughs> Um, and this is the importance again of the caveats isn't it uh, when you don't know what to do do nothing so how does the situation change how does the situation improve well you're observing aren't you you're biding your time when you don't know what to do do nothing until such time as you do know what to do a caveat which entirely changes the meaning of the concept on in hand simple so there we go oh look conclusions so i'm really sorry by the way we're on like 40 minutes and i don't know whether i'm going to cut this down or just see if facebook will let me pop it up i'll probably watch it first because it's a disaster i reckon in conclusion lovely people everything is subjective if one finds something offensive then it is up to the offended party to ask themselves what and how it is about the matter that one finds so offensive in this way, it becomes much easier to grow and develop as a person. Safe exposure to challenge is a key part of character building. Exposure to some uncontrollable challenge or traumatic experience is inevitable. The most important thing in the life of any human is the need to feel safe and secure. This is true, yet being safe and secure in the self, regardless of external influences or perceptions is the central facet of a strong individual personality. I believe that this is what seems to be to have been overlooked and as I say with with the safe space environments and the protest that uh, the idea that words can be traumatic seriously if you think words could be traumatic <laughs> Lisa, if you're still awake, <laughs> if 
you think that words could be traumatic, then let me take you by the hand and lead you through the depths of my mind. I'll show you something that'll make your hair turn grey. Um, because you have no idea. If you, it, it, honest to God, that, that is, I find that quite disgusting. And the, 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 the expansion of the rape definition. What? Um, I've heard it said a million times. And again, I have reasons to know that in doing, in, in, in broadening that to <laughs> comments on the internet apparently can be rape now. Um, someone, it has, someone has tried to claim it. Oh, you've raped me with your words. No, fuck off. There's a dictionary, there's <laughs> several, read them. Um, and all that does is undermine every genuine survivor. And I'm not gonna say victim, because people that have been through trauma time and time again, and this is what makes me so passionate about this. Um, they're the people that stand up. They're the people that, you know, would bury their heads in the sand over, you know, would rather never be seen in an everyday situation, would rather fade into the background and be a complete grey character to the world at large. But you put them in hot water and you see how quickly they change. They will stand up and get shit done. Why? Because they know that no one else is going to fucking bother. Because no one else knows what it's like. Or the chances are no one else around them is going to have the... the necessity necessity the necessary capacity that's the one um to function in a high stress high trauma situation whereas someone that's been through trauma especially on more than one occasion you'd be surprised you, you if you find words traumatic you would be surprised um and as a survivor of trauma and as someone who knows more survivors than not by happenstance then no 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 words are not traumatic and it's insulting that that would be claimed ever and not only is it insulting, it's harmful. And I know I'm just repeating myself, but it's because it it bothers me that much. Doesn't it, Batman? See, Batman agrees. Batman agrees. Uh, yeah, so I've, I've, I've done it. I've finished. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. My hair's all sorted. I'm just wondering. I feel like I've missed something. <laughs> oh, well, it appears that I haven't. And I now look like a div wad with my hand on my head like that. Um, so I'm going to go. And um, if you're really lucky, I'll edit about half an hour out of this. If not, feel free to skip. See ya.